Hello, and welcome to part three of the Cisco Catalyst Center plug and play discovery series. In this demonstration, we're going to be using DHCP to automatically discover the Catalyst Center server. And in this case, we're going to be using the DHCP option 43 message uh, within the lease to inform the new switch of how to reach the Catalyst Center server. Now, by default, the DHCP client is going to be enabled on VLAN 1 on the switch, and this is the out-of-the-box behavior. However, we can influence that to use a custom VLAN by simply applying a global level command to the upstream device that this factory default switch is connected to. So the option 43 string will contain uh, information such as the communication protocol to use, whether that's HTTP or HTTPS. It will contain the IP address or DNS host name of the plug and play server, which is Catalyst Center and it will contain the TCP port number that's needed to connect to the Catalyst Center server. Let's take a look at our lab topology, which has not really changed since the previous video. However, there is one minor difference in that I have disabled the connection to the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface on our brand new switch. So we're not going to be using the out-of-band uh, management interface for plug-and-play discovery here. Instead, on this switch, we're going to be using VLAN 1 on the uplink going to the Catalyst 9300 switch that is upstream from it. This link is going to end up being a trunk, and it will allow VLAN 1 on it. And the VLAN 1 SVI exists on this Catalyst 9300 switch. It also contains the DHCP pool for that subnet, and that DHCP pool contains option 43, which will give this new Catalyst 9500 switch the information it needs to be able to reach Catalyst Center. As a reminder, Catalyst Center is in a separate shared services network, so in order for this switch to reach Catalyst Center, it does have to route through a few different networks, and this is typical of a standard deployment in production. So let's go over and take a look at the environment. On the left side here in our text file, I've got a configuration snippet of what the configuration looks like on that upstream 9300 switch. We have the DHCP pool configuration here. We have something called an IP DHCP class, which I'll explain in a moment. And we have the IP address information applied to the SVI for VLAN 1. So if we dig in a little bit to the DHCP pool here, you can see we're using the network range of 172.16.2.0 with a 192 uh, subnet mask. The next line down, this is the important one. This is DHCP option 43. So option 43 is a standard DHCP option that is available. Uh, and we're going to express that option in ASCII format, meaning plain text. And this string of uh, characters is semicolon delimited. And each field contains a little bit of different information that the plug and play agent will parse to figure out how to communicate with its plug and play server. So let's take a moment and go to the GitHub repository that I've written that uh, gives additional detail on this specific option. So down here in this section on the DHCP uh, discovery from a PNP or of a PNP server, I have a breakdown of what option 43 uh, looks like and what each of these segments of that option uh, do. So in this first segment, uh, number five, is simply the DHCP sub option that indicates this is a plug and play uh, message that's coming. A indicates active operation instead of passive. Uh, version one is going to be the default. I think we'll always use version one. And uh, by default, we'll want to have N for disabling debugging information. You can replace that N with a D, and that should enable some additional uh, debugging information in your syslog, but I'm not sure that you'll see anything really significant. The next field, we're going to use B2 as our default option here. And B2 simply tells the PNP agent that we're going to uh, provide it an IP version 4 address for its plug and play server. We could use B1 and specify a DNS host name instead. However, you have to recall that in order for it to resolve that DNS host name, you're going to have to include a DNS server in your DHCP lease. So if that's not already configured in your DHCP pool, we're going to have to add that information as well. So it's a little bit better to simply specify an IP address. We could also use option B3 if we were using IP version 6 instead. 
The next field, K4, is going to tell the plug and play agent what transport protocol to use. And the default option is HTTP. The next field is a capital letter I, followed by either the IP address or the DNS host name of the plug and play server. And then the final field is a capital letter J, followed by the TCP port number that will be used for communicating with the PNP server. By default, we're going to use port 80 because that initial communication is on HTTP, and it will automatically then transition to using HTTPS over port 443. So that's option 43 in a nutshell. Uh, let's go back to our configuration file here, and we'll talk about the DHCP class. So here you can see we've specified in this pool a class called Cisco PNP. That's the name we've given it. And inside that class, we've specified a range of IP addresses to give out to any DHCP client that matches the requirements for this class. So what are those requirements? Well, in this next line down, you can see that we've created this IP DHCP class named Cisco PNP. And we've configured it to inspect incoming DHCP discover messages from clients. And each one of those clients uh, in its discover message needs to include option 60. And inside option 60 should be a text string that starts with Cisco PNP. Now this caret symbol is simply a regular expression symbol and it just means the very beginning of the string. So it's saying that our string in option 60 must start with Cisco PNP and then anything could come after that. What we're doing effectively here is applying an access list or you know, an access restriction to this DHCP pool. And this is a strategy you might use if you're sensitive about the idea of enabling DHCP services on your management network. This will limit any leases that are given out to only clients who are sending option 60 with this string contained in it. And that is baked in by default into the plug and play agent in Cisco IOS. All right. Let's go back over to DNA Center, and I've gone already to the menu and down to provision and plug and play. And you can see that right now our switch is actually in the inventory here. So we're going to have to delete it because the switch is already rebooted and reconnected to Catalyst Center. So we'll delete that entry, and then we'll go back to the switch and we'll run the factory default command, which is PNPA service reset. Then when we're asked to confirm, we type yes and hit return. So this process is going to take quite a while. And what we'll do is fast forward through it while you're watching. Uh, and then we'll pick up again as soon as this is done. Okay, so the process is done. And you can see that the switch has now shown up in the plug and play portal in our Catalyst Center server. And as we were fast forwarding through this uh, output on the command line, we highlighted a couple of important uh, command lines or command line entries that were put out that you would want to focus on. So the first and most important one here to focus on is that we've acquired a DHCP lease uh, using version four on VLAN one. And it shows our IP address, the interface it's on VLAN one. And it also shows option 43, what was uh, sent in that DHCP lease. Additionally, uh, you'll see this warning here that entering enable mode will stop PNP discovery. So we can monitor this process on the council CLI, but we really can't enter into enable mode. Uh, we can hit enter on the, the keyboard and end up in the user mode, but if we try to go to the enable mode, it will actually stop plug and play. So we don't really want to do that. The next messages we see here is that the PNP agent has actually uh, discovered the Catalyst Center server. So it attempted a connection and was successful. And then we start to see lots of log output about what it's doing. Uh, one of the first things it's doing is, again, connecting to the uh, PNP server on port 80. And then it's downloading the file, which would be the certificate uh, that's needed for the HTTPS connection. And then finally down here, we can see that it is attempting to reconnect over port 443, which indicates that we're now using HTTPS. And if we go over into the plug and play portal on our Catalyst Center server, we can see the device came in with the default name of switch because we didn't specify a host name. We didn't use a bootstrap file, so we couldn't specify a host name. 
And we also see the IP address uh, that was given to it via DHCP. So that's all there is to it. This concludes our demo, and thanks for watching.